Hello and welcome to 100 Huntley Street Full Circle. I'm Ann Maines. Yeah. And you know, our special guest for today in today's program is Sheila Ray Gregoire. And she is a columnist. She's written many books. I'll be holding up a few just to give you a little taste of them later. But her whole focus on today's program is intimacy in marriage and how that can be, that should be related to more than just sex. Intimacy right. encompasses so much more. 70% of women are doing most of the household chores, right. mm -hmm. the new battle of the sexes is over who is doing what in the house. And I just want to say, my husband knows, uh, <laughs> because we are talking about intimacy in marriage today uh, on the program, that uh, not to bother with the flowers. Mm -hmm. uh, if he wants to kindle romance, well... Now we're up to the main part of the program. Sheila Gregoire comes to us from Belleville, Ontario, and she brings a much-needed voice to our nation with common-sense principles wrapped up in her down-to-earth humor. She's at home whether she's here on 100 Huntley Street, at CBC Radio, at home live, or writing her column, Reality Check. Today she's going to be talking to us about intimacy in marriage. So please welcome to Full Circle from Belleville, Ontario, Sheila Gregoire. Sheila! We are so excited to have you. I know I saw you just last week at the Writers Guild Award. You are a very prolific writer. You've written several yes. books. I've got three of them here. To Love, Honor, and Vacuum. <laughs> All right. Reality Check. And your latest is How Big Is Your Umbrella? Mm -hmm. And it's Weathering the Storms of Life. And I know you've had some storms that we'll get into in a few minutes. But today we're talking about intimacy in marriage and I wanted to ask you exactly what is intimacy and and how come a lot of us only capsulize it in the form of sexual intimacy when it's so much more than that yeah I think intimacy is when you really feel like you're one mm -hmm. you know when when the Bible says you know that you shall leave your father and mother and cleave to your wife and they shall become one flesh that's what we're supposed to be and it's not just sexual intimacy it's it's intimacy where you really share everything with your spouse but don't you think that a lot of women in their marriages don't feel like one at all. You feel like you're against each other. You know, mm -hmm. like you're two heads and you're butting and you're always fighting. Almost like a competition. Yeah, and you know, it's who's going to get their needs met first. <laughs> you know, and that's just not what it's supposed to be. A lot of loneliness. Yeah. I think marriage. there's no more lonely place sometimes than mm -hmm. to be in a marriage where you feel like you're not loved. Or mm -hmm. I mean, how do you get to that point where you can feel that you can safely communicate with a person? And that's difficult. That takes a lot of emotional vulnerability. Yeah, mm -hmm. And I think what women need to realize is so often we're focused on getting our needs met. You know, they say that, <laughs> that for men, um, sex is a necessity, affection is the choice. Right. Whereas for women, affection right. is the necessity and sex is the choice. So you could be sitting here. I know I'm getting the sex again and we'll get to other things later, but I think this is important to say. You know, but a woman could be sitting there thinking, well, there's no way that I'm going to make love to you until you at least kiss me with no expectations of it going further. Like, how want some real affection here but at the same time he's feeling well you're not meeting my needs so how can I be affectionate with you and I almost think of it like World War One you know like you're each in your own trench and you're not getting anywhere because in World War One they just sat in their trenches you know in the mud and you're each waiting for the bombs to come so you don't want to stick your head out but what kind of a marriage is that at yeah. some point yeah. someone's I know when I was first it. married we had a really rough adjustment I think we each had a lot of expectations on the other um, I was expecting him to meet all my emotional needs because I hadn't had those from my father you know he was expecting me to do all kinds of things that I just couldn't I wasn't there yet and we had a rough time and when my daughter was born that was when we were starting to get closer and then our second child uh, when I was pregnant was diagnosed with a really serious heart defect and uh, he lived for a month I got to hold him for 29 days mm -hmm. and then and then he died and I remember we, we went into the doctor's office when they gave us the diagnosis and he said you need to know that 50 percent of couples will divorce within a year it was a just, loss like this. Right. Which is a horrible thing to say to a person anyway. I, I mean, know. it's just never. <laughs> no. But, you know, we made the decision that that was not going to happen mm -hmm. to no. us. And, uh, and that's really when we started getting closer. But I think often in marriages, there are these crossroads, and you need to make a decision. Am I going to grow closer? Am I going to grow further apart? And if, don't I know there's a lot women of women just, often we get so busy, you know? Well, and Moira cited a study earlier in the program. On average, a study shows that women are doing 9.9 .9 hours of work each day at the office or in the home, and men are doing 9.1 hours every day and now that doesn't seem like a big difference you know 45 minutes 46 yeah. minutes but at the end of the week that's huge it's a full work day yeah. after seven days yeah. Yeah. and I know that many women feel so overworked and don't feel like 
men are helping out enough. And I think, I don't know that there's intentional malfeasance here, but I know from personal experience that men tend to overestimate how much housework <laughs> they're doing <laughs> because yeah. they're doing so much more than their fathers did. Yeah. Right. My, yeah. my father-in-law yeah. never, probably never changed a diaper. My <laughs> husband changed thousands. Yeah. Well, hundreds, anyway. And, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. task, you, right. know, like, you can look after the baby, get the dinner right. on, talk to your friend mm -hmm. on the mm -hmm. phone, and look after the laundry all at the same yeah. time. Mm -hmm. Whereas often if a man you know, cares for a child for two hours, he thinks he's done something amazing. <laughs> you know? so, but I think we need to give men a bit of a break there and, and, and just be well, thankful when they do We need to make a point of noticing what we love about our husbands mm -hmm. instead of mm -hmm. noticing everything they do wrong. That's so often great. when women mm -hmm. talk to each other, we, we complain about our husbands. You know, what do you love about your husband? And, and tell, tell your him. husband what you tell love. Him. And yeah. tell him in front of the children you have that what you they love need for it. intimacy, but it's just in different ways. I think it's just in different ways. But I think one of the problems is that our society has taken sex and so perverted it mm -hmm. that it has become mostly about the physical. You know, and, and you see that even in women's magazines, like how to make it right. feel better or how to do it differently or whatever. And we focus on the physical act instead of what it's supposed to be which is all encompassing you know a spiritual union as well and an emotional union and we're always focusing on how to do it better instead of just how to love each other well, through intimacy it. Intimacy was God's idea in the first place. I mean you I know you did a parallel study of two scriptures in the Bible where um, Adam took Eve as his wife and knew her as his wife and then you yeah. paralleled that to the scripture where David says to the Lord search me and know me. Right. So God acts that, that Hebrew word to know yes. God uses both for sex Sex and knowing him. So that's what that's what sex is supposed to be. It, it, it's a spiritual knowing of someone. And isn't that what women want? They want intimacy, mm -hmm. which is to be known by someone that fully and accepted for who we are. When you're feeling taken for granted. Mm -hmm. And that's hard to do when you're feeling mm -hmm. lonely. And I know that and I'm not trying to belittle that and, and I'm I not have a wonderful situation. Yeah. But if you are feeling lonely today, the best thing that you can do is just to go to God with that loneliness mm -hmm. and say, Lord, you made me. You are the only one who can mm -hmm. truly complete me. So please do that and help me mm -hmm. to love my husband mm -hmm. and help me to appreciate my husband and to show him that. And mm -hmm. I know it's hard, but God can help you. And when you take that step, instead of thinking about what you need, but what he needs, you're going to find he changes too and your relationship will be better.